<laughs> Welcome to medieval times. A little uh, cable guy reference, <laughs> Jim Carrey. <laughs> What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. So on today's video, we're gonna be going over the Milwaukee nine inch cutoff tool. Now, I know I'm gonna say some controversial things in this video that some people might not like, but I'd like to start it off with saying that I generally have reasonable expectations about a product. So uh, going into it, this, this saw is amazing for small jobs and small, small, small jobs. Okay, so if you are cutting a six inch by six inch piece of concrete out, this is the saw for you. Um, if the saw, are, or if you were trying to cut something over four and a half inches thick, um, if you're trying to go through a, a slab of a house, uh, this is not the tool for you. Um, you will be aggravated, it doesn't cut deep enough. Um, you're limited at about four inches is what I have uh, measured in uh, real testing. So. Uh, this saw has a lot of great features, one of them being the Milwaukee One Key. You can, you can check it out on the app if you're not familiar with the app. The app is kind of cool and it shows you where the, where the tool was last and uh, you know, some specs about it and, and you can monitor it. Um, not bad. I don't find a, a real, real life application for the use as a remodeling contractor. I'm sure if I had 50 of these saws out somewhere that it would make sense um, to have the one key and be tracking a bunch of different tools, but I don't. Um, I really love the water feature on this. Um, it has a really nice, uh, it has a really nice shutoff valve that shuts it down real nice and tight. Um, it comes with a quick disconnect for your garden hose. So it's always on the tool and you don't have to worry about it. You just go get the garden hose and hook it up. That's really nice. It flows a great amount of water. It keeps the dust down. This thing is perfect for cutting indoors where you don't have to worry about gas fumes and you know uh, that kind of thing. <sighs> but it has a lot to be desired. This thing does come with a diamond, a diamond blade and an abrasive blade. Um, I've only used a diamond blade on this and I've used it for a, a, a variety of projects, but most of the time it was in a bathroom or a kitchen cutting concrete slab to move plumbing. So the one drawback I have on this, and man, it's a huge one, and that's the reason why I'm gonna tell you just don't buy this saw, is it's runtime. This thing eats through batteries. I'll go through a 12 amp hour battery in a minute and a half, maybe. The problem is, is this sends the battery into thermal protection or thermal overload. It's, it's pulling too much power out of the 12.0 too fast, and the 12.0 doesn't completely deplete. It overheats and it will stop the machine, and then you are forced to change over to another battery. When that battery cools down, uh, we generally see two to three bars left on the battery. So you're literally using one or two bars out of a battery before it goes into thermal overload, and then you're running to a next battery. Now, if it's not cold outside and it's hot, you're not gonna get those batteries to cool down enough to be able to even charge them or reuse them in the tool. Because what I've noticed, even on a cool day, which we were working on, let me give you a for instance, all right? We were working on a 15 inch trench, or sorry, 15 foot trench through a kitchen to, to move plumbing from one side of the wall to a peninsula. Now, I could only make a cut about six to eight inches long before the battery got in, went into thermal overload. Now I have six 12.0 batteries, which is a large investment when it comes to a battery platform, six 12.0s, and we didn't even make it halfway down one side of the cut on the 15 foot run. So I spent a better part of six to seven hours messing around with the batteries taking them outside, putting them in the freezer to cool them down, to recharging them on a rapid charger, to then put them back in the tool to make a couple more inches of cut. Now, I've done some small jobs on this, and you know, a six inch by six inch little piece that you need to cut out of the concrete, it can handle it. You can run it, cut it, piece of cake, put a new battery in it, do the other side, but you are not making any type of leeway on a large scale project. And to be honest, 
a 15 foot trench in a four inch concrete slab in a house is not that big of a job. Um, it took us all day fighting with this saw where I was ready to just go buy the MX fuel version to see what that did. But this thing is, is nice and it has a lot of features and it's, it's very, very uh, user friendly and it's not hard to manage. Um, it even has a, a yellow LED light on the front of it to tell you when you're overloading it or you're pushing it too hard. I found that I could barely push the saw before it went into, uh, before the LED lit up on me. So when you come out of a project and you're like, wow, we just spent seven hours cutting that trench out. Like I wish I would have just got a gas powered saw and, and, uh, you know, dealt with the fumes and just you know, put a bunch of fans in because we would have got that cut in five minutes to go through it with a big saw. And then the rest of the time we could have chipped it out. Um, this saw doesn't cut deep enough for a four inch slab. Um, if you're doing a small spot, great, awesome. You can just run the saw, boop, boop, done. And then knock it out with a hammer, great. And you can move that drain however however far you need to in that little that little hole. But if you're doing any kind of project at scale, more than a foot by foot small project, this is not the saw for you. So um, I've put this thing through quite a few jobs now and I've been generally impressed with it other than the battery is just not there. So even with the 12 amp hour batteries, it just doesn't have the runtime, and that's not pushing it hard at all. Uh, and so I give it a big thumbs down because it's just a hassle to deal with. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like I have reasonable expectations. Uh, it's awesome that I can operate it inside. Uh, it is really nice fit and finish, but if it's depleting to 12.0 so fast that it's going into thermal overload within, I would say we didn't get more than a minute cut time out of the saw on each battery, no matter what. And that's bringing cold batteries out of the trailer, putting them in the saw, and getting a minute to maybe a minute and a half, if I'm being generous, cut time out of the saw. And then once the battery is heated up and then you're trying to charge them, which heats them even more, the runtime after that, the rest of the day was 30 seconds. 30 seconds, 30 seconds. And then you go through your six batteries and then you try to cool them off, charge them up, and then you're back to 30 seconds, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. So it was really, really aggravating to do a, uh, a project at with a little bit of scale. Um, I don't know if I would, you know, a lot of guys are hooking this up to, you know, the, the Milwaukee Switch, you know, backpack and things like that. And like, great and all, but like, have you really put it through its paces? Have you really cut old hard concrete that's in someone's home and you're cutting the slab out? I don't see anybody testing it uh, in, in a real life setting because all this did was aggravate me and make my project go longer. And so <clears throat> if you're a contractor or you work on the clock, man, this is a big time saver if it were to work, but it's also a big time waster if you spend seven hours cutting a trench that should only have taken an hour to bust out with two guys. So it is what it is. Milwaukee, love the fit and finish on this saw. Love the way it looks, love the way it operates, but man, when it comes to runtime, it just isn't there. And those 12 amp hour batteries, like, They'll last forever on a lot of tools, but this is just too high demand of a 12 amp hour M18 battery that you can't feasibly work for it for any length of time. So um, that's my review and I'm sticking to it. I give it a thumbs down. I mean, if you wanted it for some really, really small jobs, great, go out and get it. Um, at a kit price of $900 or a tool only of $700, not worth it in my opinion. So um, I would even go as far as saying I'd rather deal with the gas fumes uh, than to do something like this. Now, I will buy the MX Fuel one to give it a shot, but the battery technology in this tool here is just not there yet. So once we get some ba better battery packs or um, get some extended runtime without them overheating, great, I'll give it another shot. But as of right now, I'm really disappointed with it. Um, I've had it for a while and I've put it through its paces. It's done okay, but 
it's just not there. So that's my review. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Nice, quick, short one for you. Um, if you've got any questions or concerns, write them in the comments. Let's talk about it. Uh, some people have good luck with this all, but I see a lot of reviews on YouTube where the guys really aren't using it. So uh, they might use it for a couple little small cuts and that's all they're showing. Um, I wish that I would have got some B-roll of me really running this thing and show you exactly why it's aggravating me, but unfortunately wasn't able to record in the customer's home. So um, yeah. So there you have it. I rolled in some pictures and that's about the best I can do. Um, if you're interested in tools, tips, and tricks to make you more self-sufficient, well, then stay tuned to the channel and we'll see you guys on the next one.